Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by. Welcome to the PBC on NBC call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, there will be an opportunity for questions and comments. Instructions will be given at that time. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference call over to Kelly Swanson. Kelly, please go ahead. Thank you, operator. Thanks, everyone, for calling in. We have an exciting conference call today um, to talk about an unbelievable boxing weekend coming up in Las Vegas. Um, you're going to hear more about that from Leonard Ellerby, um, Chief Executive Officer of Mayweather Promotions, who will run the call. But before I introduce him, I just want to let you know that Adrian Broner and Sean Porter will be joining us. But first, before he joins us, we're going to talk to Errol Spence, Jr., um, and his opponent, Roberto Garcia, was also supposed to join the call, but unfortunately he had a last-minute medical appointment that he had to get in before he um, departed for Las Vegas, so he won't be able to join us. But uh, this uh, other young gentleman um, is a fantastic fighter, and I'm certainly looking forward to hearing him, to seeing him fight. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Leonard Ellerby, who will make the introductions and open it up. Leonard? Thank you, Kelly. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us on this afternoon's call. Um, PBC on NBC returns to primetime network television this Saturday, June the 20th. The telecast begins at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Time. We'll be coming to you live from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, and this event will be sponsored by Corona, and I'd like to thank them for their support. Our main event will feature a 12-round showdown between former world champions Adrian Bronner and Sean Porter. The co-main event features hot prospect Earl Spence Jr. and veteran Roberto Garcia in a 10-round welterweight fight. Following the fights on NBC, we will switch over to NBCSN for more great action. The tickets for the live events, which will be promoted by Mayweather Promotions in association with PGB Promotions, on sale now. The tickets are available through Ticketmaster and MGMGrand.com. With the purchase of a ticket to the June 20th fight this Saturday, all the fans will also have access to the PVC on CBS card taking place on Sunday at the MGM Grand. That bout will feature in the main event, Francis Bartholomew versus Antonio DeMarco, and Sammy Vasquez will fight Wale Omototo, which begins at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. on CBS. So I'd like to start out introducing the co-main event, and um, I'd like to start out with Earl Spence. Earl Spence is coming to us from DeSoto, Texas. He's a former U.S. Olympian in the 2012 Olympics, and he most recently dominated Samuel Var Vargas on April 11th on PVC card. I'm very familiar with this young, hot prospect. He's a very, very talented fighter, and a very and he will be a force to be reckoned with for quite some time. He's a future world champion. Um, he's coming to us 16 and 0 with 13 KOs. Earl. Hey, what's up, man? Just glad to be here. Um, it's a big opportunity for me on a big, uh, on a huge stage, and uh, you know I'm gonna go in and um, do like I always do, put on a great show and a great performance, and raise my stock. And uh, hopefully after this fight and after this great performance, I can be a main event on uh, NBC. Great. Okay, thanks. Um, we're going to go ahead and open it up, and operator, go ahead and open up the lines. Thank you. If you would like to ask your question or have a comment, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. This will place your question in the order it was received. Once again, if you would like to ask your question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad now. At this time, we'd like to start with our first question from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Dan, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Hello, Leonard and Kelly. Uh, Errol, how are you today? Hello. Hey. Oh, great. Okay. Hey, Errol, uh, this is, uh, like you mentioned, that's a big opportunity to be uh, on NBC in front of a lot of people. Um, you know, you're moving kind of quick in your career. Uh, you know, you have that kind of talent. But I'm wondering, uh, do you feel like – 
you're moving at the way you want to be moving, faster, slower, where you're supposed to be, and then how soon do you think that if you can uh, take care of your opponent, Roberto Garcia, this weekend, that, uh, that you can get into you know, uh, an even more significant fight, perhaps for a title at some point? Um, yeah, I feel like I'm moving the way I want to move. Uh, I'm fighting when I want. I'm fighting when I want to, and I'm fighting on the regular. So uh, you know, everything's been going consistent and uh, and how I want it, how I want it to go. And uh, I'm stepping up in competition, and I'm fighting on the big stage that I want to fight on. And um, after I get rid of Roberto Garcia, I think my, it'll be another step of a fight. Hopefully, I can get a more name on the opponent. Hope you're a former world champion in there, and then by by sometime early next year, I can fight for a world title. Do you think, Errol, that uh, you know you come into the professional ranks, according to most people, myself included, frankly, that you were perhaps the most talented fighter on the United States Olympic team in 2012, and the guy with the most potential uh, as a professional. Um, and I'm sure you've heard that, maybe you've read that. Uh, does that is that a distraction for you? Does it motivate you? Uh, do you believe your clippings? Like, how do you stay sort of focused? Because it seems like you are a pretty focused guy the way you've been going about your business. I want to say focus is just something I naturally do, but, you know, I, I also want to live up to the to the hype and to the, to the high standards that a lot of uh, boxing writers and um, a lot of people have high expectations of me. So I want to live up to them standards and, um, uh, I just got to go out there and perform and look great, and I want to look great, so I have to stay focused and work hard, and that's the only way that I'm going to get to where I want to be and get to the top and get to fighting these these uh, named on opponents and, get fight, and just fight for, uh, for for more money and better money. So I just have to stay focused and just and just stay dedicated, and I'll, I'll be definitely fighting more named on opponents like, um, Robert Guerrero or Keith Thurman or Mary Khan or some, somebody like that. So then what, uh, what, uh, Errol then does, uh, a victory against Garcia uh, do in terms of getting you there? He's, a, you know, not that well known, but he's got some good names that he's faced and, you know, he seems like a pretty tough guy, uh, maybe not the fastest guy in the world, but he's, you know, he can get in there and bang away. Uh, what does the victory do then to get you to your goal of getting to the guys that you just mentioned? Um, I think Robert Garcia, he, he's, he's a tough, He's he's a veteran, and I think me being a prospect and on the verge of being a contender, I had to face a guy like that, tough, rugby guy with a lot of experience and with a, a real good record, so I can go into that contender level and contender status where I can start fighting more name known guys. So I think it's just a pro- another one of the, a process I have to go through so I can get to where I want to be. So, um. No, Roberto Garcia is a tough fighter. He's not the most name. He's not as name known as the guys I would like to fight. But I have to fight him to get to those guys. I got you, Arnold. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you this weekend. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And once again, if you have a question, please press star, then one on your telephone keypad now. And our next question comes from Chris Koreski from poundforpound.com. Chris, please go ahead. Hey, Errol, how are you today? I'm good. Good. Hey, my question uh, is sort of along the lines of what Dan just asked you. With the um, emergence of a lot of the Eastern European fighters, a guy like Lomachenko, for example, who fights for a title in his you know, second or third uh, professional fight, depending on how you feel for the World Series, about the World Series of Boxing, do you feel pressure then to sort of step up your own process and take tougher fights and develop a little bit quicker than uh, we've normally seen American fighters in the past. Uh, nah, I mean I don't, I don't necessarily feel pressured. Everybody has their, you know, their own path that they have to take. Um, well, Semichinko did was great, and that's, that's extraordinary and really unheard of. But uh, everybody has their own path, and everybody grows different. So. Um, do you think that we'll start to see a shift? I'm sorry to interrupt. Do you think we'll start to see a shift in the, the thought process of American promoters and managers looking at the success of a guy like Lomachenko or Peter Biev or some of these other guys with extensive amateur backgrounds have much sooner, I guess, than people thought they would 
turning professional. Do you think that will impact the way that we do business on this side of, uh, you know, boxing? Uh, I don't really think so, because Lemachenko, his his amateur pedigree and how many amateur fights he had and him being, I think, two-time Olympian, like guys like Ricky Dow, stuff like that, they got huge, huge amateur backgrounds, unlike Americans. We, I mean, it's very seldom you see an American fighter with 300, 400, 500 amateur fights. You don't get that. So, I mean, we don't really have that much experience like that that they have and Lemmy Chinko was fighting a professional W he was fighting in the WSB which is really professional five three minute rounds so without the headgear so I mean he was already kinda adjusted to the to the pros. Excellent Errol I love hearing a fighter uh, who who really delves into the history of the sport. I appreciate it and good luck this weekend. Thank you. And our next question comes from Jeffrey Freeman from the KO Digest. Jeffrey, please go ahead. Hi, thank you for putting me on the call. Question for Errol Spence. Uh, Errol, since PBC has started broadcasting fights in 2015, you've had obviously the one fight on the Garcia Peterson undercard, but your fighter commercial or your bio, I'm not quite sure what you call that, that little vignette that they do about you, that's been getting a lot of exposure. You've been getting a lot of exposure. Can you tell me what that's been like to see yourself on TV and what the reaction has been to that exposure, to that promotion? Um, I mean, it's been great. I'm excited. It, it shows that my hard work has been paying off, and it shows what my manager, how my, my manager believes in me because I've only been pulled for three years and some change. It's that. And I'm already being being broadcasted with guys that've been pro eight, ten years, eleven years, and I'm and I'm head to head with these guys. So it just shows the um, it shows a lot of people believe in me, and you know I got a lot of people behind me who support me. Right on. Uh, you mentioned Robert Guerrero, Keith Thurman, and Amir Khan. Uh, as potential opponents that you're looking at. Do you see them as stepping stones to something bigger, or, is, or are those the fights you want? It sounded like you might have been alluding to a, a different fight. Um, you, you, you trying to say, do I see Americana, Americana is a stepping stone to something bigger? Well, I'm wondering, uh, I, I guess what I'm wondering is if, if, if you see those guys as in your way to fight Mayweather. Is that what it's ultimately about for you? I mean, not necessarily. Um, you know, these are the guys that's in the top ten, that's in the top five. These are the guys that supposed to be at the full retires in September. These are the guys that's going to be supposedly running in the division. So these are the guys I'm looking at. Um, I'm nowhere near close to be the fight Mayweather because I haven't even gotten the top ten yet. Right. So these are the guys I'm looking at that's in the top ten that's supposedly running away class at the I'm gone. I mean, after Floyd's gone and retired. Right on. Thanks, Harold. Good luck. Next week. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And our next question comes from Eddie Goldman from No Holds Barred. Eddie, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, Errol and everybody. I want to ask you about what you know of your opponent, Roberto Garcia, because if you look at his record, in the last year, he's beaten a number of experienced fighters with pretty good records. Do you consider, as a pro, Garcia to be the toughest fighter that you faced? Uh, I see him as the most most experienced fighter. I mean, it could be the toughest. It all depends. Uh, one of my tough tough fights was against uh, Emmanuel Arte. He was sixteen and zero, and I was eight and zero at the time. But, I mean, it could be. He's tough, he's experienced, and he's gritty. So, uh, and I know he's going to come to fight. So it could be one of my toughest fights today. Now, you've gone back and forth in the last year or so between welterweight and super welterweight. Is there one of those weight classes you particularly want to focus upon? I'm saying that 147. 147 is, is my weight class. Like, a lot of times I might fight at 148 or something like that, but 147 is the weight class that I'm fighting at. Okay, thank you. Good luck in the fight. Thank you.
Um, okay, that was your last question, Earl, but I have one for you that I'd like to add here. Um, you know, the weekend is Father's Day weekend, and from the from what I've read about you, your dad was pretty in, instrumental in making sure you had a boxing career. I guess he took a grade, graveyard shift uh, so he could get you to the gym. And I'm wondering if you could share with us you know, a little bit about your relationship with your dad, how important he was to the development of your boxing abilities, and uh, if he'll be with you this weekend in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. Um, well, my dad, I mean, he, he got me started in boxing. And, um, well, he used to, he was, he was a truck driver, so he used, he used to drive overnight. And then um, he'd get home, like, 12 p.m. one at one in the afternoon and then take me to the gym and then after he come from the gym it's like five or six PM and then he'll go straight, you know, he'll rest for like one or two hours and go straight to work. And I at the time I really didn't really think about it but as as I got older and a little bit wiser, uh, you know, I just realized you know, all the sacrifices that he sacrificed for me to for me to be able to box and go to all these national tournaments and all these tournaments out of state and stuff, because he had to pay for the hotel, pay for food and stuff like that, out of pocket. Nobody else, we didn't have any sponsors and stuff like that. So, I mean, he he plays a big part in my boxing career. You know, he's my supporter, that's my mentor, that's like my best friend. And, you know, just for Father's Day, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get him a win, and it's gonna be an impressive win that you know he'll be proud of and he'll. You know, he love, but um, yeah, he played a big part in my career. And uh, without him, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't be boxing. I know I wouldn't be boxing. Hmm. Great. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. I know he was an important part of your uh, story. So, uh, Leonard, that is it on um, the side for Arrow. We appreciate you taking the time out of your training, and I imagine you're on your way to Vegas, if not later today, then tomorrow. So. Best of luck to you, and um, we uh, we look forward to watching you on PBC and NBC. Leonard, any final thoughts for Errol, and then we'll get to the main event? No, I'm, um, the fans are going to be in for a great treat um, with this fight. Um, Garcia comes with a, a lot of experience, and Errol is the new guy on the block, and, and he's making a name for himself, and, and uh, big things are expected out of Errol, and He'll be looking to uh, come through on Saturday night with a great performance. Okay, great. Thanks, Errol. Anything, any last-minute thoughts from you, and we'll let you go. Uh, thank you. I'd like to thank everybody for, for the questions and stuff and everybody tuning in, listening. And um, just make sure you tune in Saturday. I'm going to put on a great performance and a great show. Okay, great. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Um, okay, now we're going to turn this over to the main event, and uh, we actually have uh, one of the one of the uh, combatants on the phone, uh, Mr. Sean Porter, and his dad, Ken Porter. Um, Adrian will be calling in momentarily, but we're not going to hold you up. So, Leonard, if you would uh, like to make the introduction for Sean Porter and his father, Ken Porter. Um, and then when Adrian calls in, we'll have to break away and make another quick introduction. But let's go ahead and get started with Sean. Sure. Um, and then in the main event, we have a very, very exciting fight. We have two gentlemen who are very familiar with, with each other. They both come out of the state of Ohio. They, they both have extensive amateur background. And um, I think it's going to be an excellent, excellent fight. Um, first up, we have Sean Porter. Like I said, he's coming to us from out of Akron, Ohio. He's now fighting out of Las Vegas. His most of win um, was on Spike TV on in March. He fought Eric Monet. Um, he has fought a number of good fighters, um, including big wins over former world champions Devin Alexander and Paulie Malinox. Um, he comes to us with a 25-1 and one, and one draw with 16 KOs, none other than the former IBF welterweight champion, Sean, Showtime Porter. What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me on. Okay. Um, I know that it, is your dad with you too, Sean, Ken? Yes, ma'am. She's right here. He's right here. 
Okay, Ken um, and Sean, maybe if you want to give a brief opening about training camp and how things are going, and then we can open it up to the media. Okay, well, thank you guys for uh, the wonderful introduction, Leonard, and uh, really appreciate you guys having us on today. Uh, as far as our training camp, uh, Sean has been uh, he's been preparing for this fight in the previous fight, in the previous fight before that, uh, ever since he turned professional. So we never really go into a camp per se. We just continue with what we were already doing. Uh, I have been blessed with an athlete who understands that this is his lifestyle, it's year-round, and uh, he just works like that. So uh, when it was time to turn up the uh, the heat a little bit, you know, we we were already ready to go. Uh, when it was time to bring down the weight a little bit, that wasn't a problem either. He's strong. He's happy. Uh, he's feeling really good. Uh, today, we did a little bit of track work, and we went headed to the gym, and then we were reminded that we had this conference call with you guys. So uh, it was absolutely no problem for us to go back home and sit down for a little bit and, and take this call because, you know, all of our hard work has already been done, not just in this fight or this camp, but in previous fights and previous camps that we've had before this. So uh, everything is on point. Everything is exactly where we want it to be, and we're looking forward to uh, a great fight on Saturday night against a great fighter. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and open it up. It sounds like the dog is particularly excited about the fight, huh? Oh, let me get rid of that one. That's the pit bull. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, operator, go ahead and open it up for questions. And uh, I understand Adrian Broner is about a minute away, so when he when I do get confirmation, we will cut back and introduce Adrian. and then. But let's go ahead and open it up for questions, please. Thank you. We will now open up for questions. If you have a question, please press star, then one on your telephone keypad. Our first question comes from Michael Knox from Fox Sports, 1340 AM. Michael, please go ahead. Um, good afternoon, Sean, and it's a pleasure to speak with you. Hope training is going good for you. Um, I have a, but my question is this. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest fights you've had in, in, in a while, and going up against a, an opponent with the caliber of Adrian Bronner and his skills. Um, what have you done differently in this in this training, you know, camp to prepare yourself for this fight and the speed of Adrian Bronner? You know what? I'll give you – I'll, I'll let you know. Yes, he is skillful and fast. And um, we haven't really done much different to, you know, try to offset that or anything. The reason being is because – we we know that I'm just as fast and just as quick as he is. So there aren't there haven't been any you know special workouts that we've incorporated this camp or anything like that to do differently to offset his speed. We just really uh, focus more so on my skills and also uh, the different techniques that are required to cut off and slow down a, a fast fighter like him. So. You know, it's it's all of what we've been doing just at a higher level, if that makes sense to you. So oh, that makes we're perfect. not over we're not overlooking his speed. We we've just done more of what we need to do to prepare for it, which is what we've always done. Yeah, I think uh, this is Ken speaking. I think um, just to give you guys a little info. I think Devin Alexander is one of the fastest boxers in boxing. Period. I know that. Uh, Manny Pacquiao is one of the fastest boxers in boxing. I know that Andre Durrell is one of the fastest boxers in boxing in this sport. Sean has been able to compete against those type of guys in professional fights, in sessions, in camps. We don't have a problem with anyone's speed. He's just as fast as anybody that comes in the ring with him. So when you talk about uh, a guy's speed, that's not something we're concerned with. Uh, the problem that uh, that guy will have to deal with is we're fast and we got power to come along with that. So uh, 
we're prepared for that. Uh, just like Sean said, we just continue doing what we've already done. Uh, at this point in time, that is not that is not a concern at all. So we're we're, we're ready for that. And my next question, if I could, uh, Champ, is have you in any way prepared yourself for maybe the antics that come along in the ring with an Adrian Bronner and some of the things that, you know, he's he typically known for doing in the ring to, you know, play around and things like that? Have you prepared yourself mentally for that? You know what? I haven't. I understand that that could, that could arise during the fight. My whole thing is this, and it's something that my dad has always impressed upon me as being professional at all times. Being professional means maintaining your composure and staying poised and sticking to the game plan no matter what. So no matter what he may do or say during the fight, more than likely that means I'm doing something right, and I'll just continue to do what I'm doing and, and what my corner is asking me to do. So uh, I, I'm not worried about it at all. I am who I am, and, and that gets the job done. And, and let me touch, let me touch on that, Sean, also, too, is that, you know, this is a fight. Uh, Sean's coming to knock Adrian's head off. And he's, he's in a real fight, and this is a big fight. I think it's going to be a very entertaining fight. They have, both have contrasting styles. Both, both have strengths, certain strengths that they do certain things very well, and it's going to be a very, very competitive, exciting fight. Operator, next question, please. And our next question comes from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Dan, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Hey, guys. How are you guys today? Hi, Dan. Hey. Um, my, my first question, just to, to, uh, for factual purposes here, uh, I'm not clear on the weight for the fight. Is it 144 or 145 maximum? We're not clear either, Dan. <laughs> Leonard, <laughs> Leonard, can you, uh, can you uh, tell me what, that weight class, what the weight for the fight is? 44. 145. So if they're 145, that's the problem, correct? I'm just making sure there's no, like, plus one stuff that goes on in Vegas sometimes when it's a non-title bout. There are no problems, Dan. This is this is a fight. Both guys are in shape. Both guys are going to make weight, and they're going to give the fans a great fight. Not, uh, not saying there's any problems. I just want to make sure that I got the facts right. So when I write in the story that the maximum weight's 144, it doesn't turn out to actually be 145 on the day of the weigh-in. I'm just checking. Leonard? No, yep, I gave it to you. Okay, fair enough. Um, okay, Sean, my question for you is this. Uh, you know, you're an Akron guy. Uh, Broner's a Cincinnati guy. They're saying it's the Battle of Ohio, uh, and we're going to, to Las Vegas, a great place for big fights all the time, a tremendous place to have fights. But uh, did you think maybe you guys would be duking it out in Ohio to settle the, uh, the bragging rights for the state? <laughs> you know, I'm a Northeast Ohio guy, not just Akron, not just Cleveland. Uh, it's, it's a blessing to be able to represent Northeast Ohio, and I've done that uh, for a very long time with, with pride, and, and I've been proud and made everyone proud back home along the way. Uh, I, again, everything I've learned, I learned from my dad. He told me a long time ago, he says, if you want to improve, if you want to get better and, and do things at the highest level, you got to move on, and sometimes, you know, Leave leave home at uh, leave home alone, and take care of your business. You know. So with that being said, uh, Las Vegas is the mecca of boxing. It's where we all want to be. I've been blessed enough to move out here two years ago, and this is where I always wanted my career to go. So a fight of this magnitude is happening where it's supposed to happen. That uh, the bragging rights will come after the fight. Gotcha on that. Uh, you heard Leonard say that the that the weight for the fight was uh, you got to make 144, and uh, you know I know you've been a very strong fighter when you've been fighting uh, as a welterweight. Uh, before that, you fought a lot of fights, um, you know, start around 2010-ish or so where you were a junior middleweight. I think, if I'm not mistaken, you even had your pro debut. You were like a super middleweight. Um, how, how hard is it going to be for you to get down to 144? And is that, uh, what, you know, what was the reason that, that you guys made the fight, you know, for significantly under the welterweight limit when both of you guys have been welterweight champions and not had any issues with uh, 147? Well, you know what? I'll answer the first question first. Um, right now, we're Cadillacing, and what I mean by that is we're taking it one day at a time. We're moving slow, so everybody can see us, and we're feeling good doing it. You know, it's uh, it's coming coming along 
exactly the way we wanted it to, and it's been a blessing. You know, um, we were we were called and told that we were asked to be 144 pounds by Adrian Browner. That was not our decision. And, you know, as soon as it was announced to me from my dad, I told him, well, whatever we need to do to make the fight. So um, I guess there's a, a little kid from Cincinnati who doesn't, who's, who's afraid of, you know, fighting at 147, even though that's a weight that he's even fought for a championship at. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, the weigh-in is Friday. We'll be there. We'll be on, on weight, and we'll be excited to get on and get on that scale and, and look him in the eyes at that weight and let him know that we're feeling good. Whatever advantage he, he, he thought could come from that, then he's not getting any. So um, the, the good thing about it is, man, I'm, I'm just I'm blessed. I have, a, I have a great body, and somehow we can we can get my body to do what it needs to do. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, all I can do is give it up to God because it's, it's been great along the way. And like you said, I've, I've fought as high as 165 in the amateurs and even 154 upon, upon turning pro and now 147 for the last about four or five years. So it's, it's been great. And going down a few more pounds won't be a problem. Could hey, Dan. Yes, Kenny. Hey, Dan. I call it addition by subtraction. Okay. You want to tell me what that means? <laughs> well, as he loses weight, he increases his opportunities for big fights. Gotcha. So we came from 54 to 47, and there's big fights there and big fight names there. And, again, here we've been asked to come down a few more pounds. And it just so happens, like I said before, he's living this way year-round, so he didn't have to go into some crazy, oh, i got to get this weight off type thing, you know, um, this morning he was very light. He's eaten twice. He had twice. He's eaten twice this morning already. Feeling really good, and we're able to do this, and um, we're confident that it'll continue throughout the week to to come off like it is. And so um, we're looking forward to um, this big fight at a light, at a lighter weight. So that's why I call it addition by subtraction. We get more out of coming down in a lower weight than we did being in the higher weight class. I got you. I want to ask Sean one other thing about the fight itself. Uh, Sean, you know, both of you and Adrian have been in some exciting fights, uh, but you're also both very good boxers also. So what is your take on how this is going to play out? Do you think this is going to be more of a boxing match, which you've been in and he's been in, or more of a, a, a bit of a, a more enclosed, you know, physical kind of fight where there's, you know, going to be more, let's say, explosive moments because you've both been in those kind of fights also over the years. Yeah, I, I think this fight's going to go everywhere. Um, <laughs> okay. You've seen me fight, Dan. And you, you, well, you've seen me fight, Dan. You know that I want to dictate everything. I want to dictate the pace. I want to be the commander in the ring. So with that being said, we, we're, we're versatile, which is great. And we, we can box him from the outside, and then there will also be points where we look to, you know, move in and get really physical. So um, we're, we're just going to play one round at a time, obviously, and uh, we'll look to box and, and also look to punch and, and put it all together. That's what you want in, in a big fight. And when you can do so many things, and that and this fight requires you doing so many things, we, we look to put it all together on, on Saturday night, the boxing, the punching, the, the pressure, uh, the countering, all of it. All right, very good. Sean, thank you. Kenny, appreciate it. Thank you, Leonard. See you guys uh, this weekend. Right. See you later. And once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star, then one on your telephone keypad. And our next question comes from Eddie Goldman from No Holds Barred. Eddie, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Hi, Sean. You, you know, in boxing people look at other people's records and often look a lot more at other people's losses than their wins. When when you look at Adrian Broner's record, you see he had that loss to Maidana. Is there anything you've learned from that fight with Maidana that you can apply for yourself in your fight with Adrian? Uh, yeah, we've we've taken a look at a number of his fights, not just the not just the bad, but also the good. You know, so I'm I'm steadily reminding myself not to underestimate him, not to think that I'm going to come in there and do everything that my Donna did to him, and and that's it, and I'll get the win. Uh, we look to do so much more than what my Donna did, but you know the pressure that my Donna 
applied that entire fight was uh, was great, was what he needed. And, um, you know, so we obviously will look to do some of that. But, you know, I, I've also taken a look at his earlier fights where he looked, you know, just really sharp and superb. And, you know, I just to remind myself of what he can do. There were a lot of things he didn't do against Maidana, but there were a lot of things he did do good against some of his other uh competitors in his early in his earlier in his career. So um we look to do a lot of different things this fight. It's it's gonna take a lot to win this one and, and we're ready for it. Now have there been specific things that you've learned or changed in your approach since your fight last year with Brooke? Yeah, um not, yeah, yes and no. You know, I think that fight the things that we've changed and worked on more have been have become more um number one mental and then uh number two uh the basics and and I'll say number one the mental because you know there were a lot of things that were asked of me in the corner that I didn't uh incorporate during the during the match and I was just you know obviously I'm the one in the ring at the end of the day I can only look at myself and that's the reason those things didn't show up so we work a, a lot of mental preparation since that fight, being able to um, not only listen to the corner and, you know, implement those instructions during the fight, and then, you know, the basics. You know, there were a lot of things I didn't do in that fight. Um, got a little got a little wild at points, and so we, we have to, you know, after the fight, once we get back, got back training, we went back all the way to the basics like we always do, but we put a little more emphasis on the mental aspect along with the basics. So, um, you know, we're, we're great. Now, this fight, you've fought in a lot of big arenas before, but this fight's going to be Saturday night, main event, prime time on NBC and virtually every home in the country, and it's going to be televised internationally. Tell us about how that affects you, being in such a marquee fight. Well, you know what? I can promise you this. This is something that I've always envisioned. And I've always uh, looked looked forward to, you know, my fight with Julio Diaz. When I first found out it was at the MGM, I was really, really excited. And then I was told it was going to be in one of the the conference rooms, and the 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 whole entire bubble didn't bust, but a little bit of the air came out. You know, I've I've just always marveled at how this the crowd, uh, how loud it gets, um, the the lights, the whole nine. I love every part of the ambiance of a big MGM Grand Arena fight. So I'm taking it with uh, with a lot of excitement and, you know, obviously not over-enthused, but I do understand um, the moment that I'm about to have. And the great part about it is it's a moment that I've always wanted and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So I'll take it with no problem at all. Okay, thank you. Good luck in the fight Saturday night. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Okay. That actually was your last media question, but I'm going to ask you a question myself, uh, something that I actually shared with Aerosense, too. It's Father's Day weekend for the big boxing weekend in Las Vegas, and uh, hands down, I think everybody in boxing knows about the close, intimate relationship that the Porters have. So I'd like, Sean, for you to share with us what – what your dad means to you and what you are planning for Father's Day after Saturday night. Yeah, I um I honestly I'm 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 happy that this fight has come at this time. Uh my dad and I have worked extremely hard together for a very long time doing doing this sport. And uh, you know, what better way to celebrate or wake up and just be proud of what we've done the night before as a family, as a team. And not only that, be able to share um, such a special day with one another uh, the next day, you know. So I'm excited about having this fight the night before Father's Day, and I'm looking forward to being able to wake up and go over into the next room and, wake up my dad and, and just, uh, you know, marvel at what we've done. And, you know, not obviously not only in the ring, but what what we have now as a family and as, as a uh, as a team. You know, he he means the world to me, and he knows that, and I, I definitely know I mean the world to him. So I think, 
you know, I've said this before, the love that we have, that we share, we carry that to the ring with each other, and it's, it's unparalleled. You can't match it. And that means a lot. That makes a difference during the fight. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I actually do have one more media question for you. They just came in, and that's Jake Donovan. Um, operator, do you want to introduce Jake, please? Jake Donovan from BoxingTeam.com. Jake, please go ahead. Great. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, hey, Sean, I just wanted to ask, is there any um, like legit animosity between you and Adrian? I know like you kind of spoke about the, the the contract details involved in getting this fight. Like, Is there animosity between you, or is it just you know a fight between another Ohio fighter? You know what? There was no animosity about the weigh-in up until the press conference that we had last week. We had the press conference. Uh, I, we've known for weeks now that the contract to wait is supposed to be 144. Here we are doing everything that we, we need to do as professionals to be on weight, be on point, be 100%. And the kids who, cho- who, who chose to make the contract to wait 144 wishes not to talk about the contract to wait, uh, wishes not to talk about any rehydration clause. Um, wants to avoid any any conversation involving weight limits or anything like that. And the more and more we talk about it, the more and more the animosity starts to set in because, you know, I'm a professional doing what I do. I've done it at this high level for so long, and my weight class is 47 for so long. You you want to move up into my weight, then then move up. Don't be scared. Don't be worried. Don't be afraid. Put your skill on the line along with your record. Put your um put put everything on the line. Put uh put it all on the line at one forty seven. Don't put it at one forty four and then we'll not want to talk about it. You know, so um I'm not gonna worry about it. We we, we, we will still maintain our, our professionalism and coming to this fight in this way in, um, the way we're supposed to. Uh no personal animosity towards uh, Adrian Bonner, I know him, but I know him from a distance. So with that being said, it's always been more of a hey, how you doing type of relationship, not a let's go right. to the club tonight type of relationship. And also not a, you know, why are you talking to me? You, I, I could be fighting you some type of relationship. You know? So right. we're cool. Um, the night of the fight, we will be foes for 12 rounds or however many rounds it last. After that, I will be who I am and be professional, and, um, and 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 let the boxing take care of itself. I, well, I appreciate that breakdown. Uh, I just wanted to ask about the weight too. I mean, I know you know Walter weight is your your professional weight. You're, you're getting down to this weight for this fight. Does this weight feel good, or do you see yourself moving right back up to Walter weight after this? And I, I ask that knowing that you're not looking past Adrian or June 20th. But. Yeah, no, I'm not looking past Adrian, no doubt. But you know, obviously, we made this move for a reason. That was to fight the kid, and after that. I don't think there'll be any other reason for me to move it any lower than 147. It's uh, not not going to be a problem in this fight, but, you know, it's not something that me personally, I want to entertain in the future. I'm a 147-pound fighter. Simple as that. Um, anyone I fight will be a strong 147-pound fighter, not a, you know, not a blown-up 140-pound fighter and not a, you know, soaked down 154-pounder. Um, we, we look to fight everyone at their at their best. And my best is going to be 144 on Saturday. All right, cool. Thanks a lot, Sean. Appreciate professionalism, and uh, best of luck on Saturday. Have a good one, man. Thank you. All right, you got it. Okay, that was our last uh, question. And unfortunately, Adrian Broner has not called in for the call. So we Imagine are, that. We are not. Yes, Sean, <laughs> absolutely. Um we are not going to hold up the call. Leonard, I'd like to turn it over to you for last comments. Uh, just a programming note as well. Tomorrow we do have a call for the other uh, fight, PBC on CBS, happening um, on that Sunday, June 21st, also at the MGM Grand Arena. And that will take place tomorrow at 2 p.m. with the uh, four, four fighters from the main event and the co-main event. So please call into that as well. And I'm going to turn it back over to Leonard for closing comments and uh, take it from here, Leonard. Okay, I just want to kind of clear up this whole weight issue. It seems that a lot of a lot of uh, 
back and forth about this weight issue. Both fighters have agreed to uh, fight this fight Saturday at 144 pounds max. I want to be clear with that, 144 pounds max. Both fighters agreed upon that. Um, so we, the, the fans are expecting a great fight, and I think that both fighters will be at their best come Saturday night. Both fighters have had an excellent camp and have prepared to fight at the weight, and both fighters know what to expect from each other. They know each other very well. They both have great strengths, and um, I think it's going to be a very exciting fight come Saturday night. Um, I'm, imp- I'm very impressed with uh, with Sean Porter, with uh, what he's been able to do as a professional. Um, what I what I like the most about Sean is his Sean has uh, a great deal of confidence um, as a young veteran. Um, he's willing to get in there with anybody. And those are the things that, that's a rare attribute when you see with young fighters. So a lot of fighters talk the talk, but they're not willing to step up. You know, and, and like I said, one of the most impressive things about me that I that I personally admire about Sean is that he's willing to get in there with anybody. I mean, he's even called out Floyd Mayweather. You know, he's willing to get in there with Floyd. You know, and that's what I like, that guy's willing to put, put it on the line, lay it on the line, to uh, do what it takes to feed their families and to get the fans what they want. Um, so uh, we look forward to Saturday night, a great, a great fight um, for the fans. And thank you all for tuning in. Um, Kelly, you want to take it from here? Uh, yeah. Any final comments from the Porters? And we'll wrap it up. No, you guys had a, a, a great uh, session there, good questions, and we're feeling good, so we're looking forward to seeing you guys on Saturday, and uh, thanks for having us. Okay, thank you so much, everybody.